see from the title of the lesson, this is a follow-up video about significant digits and rounding. Okay. Summarizing up what the first video was talking about are all the things that were discussed about how we determine the number of sig figs in a number. And the two main points to take home are that all non-zeros are significant and that the only time right, that the number zero will not count against you is if it's a decimal number and it's in front of numbers that will count, meaning placeholders, or if it's a very large number and there's no decimal point at the end. A general rule for helping to remember what's going on with zeros right, is if it's a number bigger than one and it has a decimal, every number counts, zeros and not zeros. If it's a number less than one, you don't start counting significant digits until you hit the first non-zero, and then everything after that counts. So, what's going to happen is, is we will start to do some math problems, multiplying, dividing, adding, subtracting, where you will have to look at a number and limit your sig figs because of the type of instrumentation we'll use. For instance, I'll measure the volume of something using a graduated cylinder, for instance, which can go one place past the decimal and give me, say, three sig figs, and a balance, which can go two places past the decimal, maybe giving me four or five sig figs. So if I do something with those numbers, the graduated cylinder limits me because I can't tell the difference between, say, 12.2 milliliters and 12.25. So whenever that happens, you will have to round certain numbers to limit your sig figs. And there's a separate set of rules for rounding. Right? There's an overhead that has these on them, so you can print those out and copy it into your notebook. Again, I just summarize what that overhead says, and I can show you those right here. But your general rules for rounding or apps are as follows. If you look at a number and it has a certain number of sig figs, once you have listed which of those numbers can be significant, you look at the last number and you have to round appropriately. If the first number after your last significant number is greater than 5, the last significant digit rounds up. If the first number that's after your last significant digit is less than 5, then it stays the same. The tricky scenario is if you have your sig figs, you hit the last sig fig, and the next number is a 5. If that number is a 5, there's two separate things that we do. The first thing we do is we check to see if there's any numbers after the 5. If there are, including zeros, if there are numbers after it, then you round the last significant digit up. And we'll do examples of each of these. If the last number after the last significant digit is a 5, right, and there isn't a number after that 5, you have to round your last significant figure to an even number. So if it's an even number, it stays the same. If it is an odd number, it will round up to become an even number. So we have to make it even. So if we were to look at some examples of this, I have listed here for you a series of different numbers and the number of sig figs that we need them to possess. After we learn how to round, I will show you how we determine the number of sig figs something should have. If we look at the first example, 28.6 is the number that my calculator says when I do a problem. My sig fig rules tell me I'm only allowed to get two sig figs. And again, I will explain to you how we can figure that out. If I only get two sig figs, I have to decide how I should write that number. So the first thing I do is I look at the number. Is a two significant? Yes. Is an eight? Yes. The reason being those are both non-zero numbers. There are my two sig figs. But we have to decide, will the 8 need to be rounded based on what follows? And if you take a look, the first number that's after the 8 is a 6. 6 is greater than 5, which means my last sig fig will round up, making this number 29. The next number I see is 
34,400. Again, I have to list the sig figs first, then decide how to round. I'm telling you, you're allowed two sig figs with this number. So I take a look. Is a three significant? Yes, it's not a zero. Is a four? Yes, it's not a zero. So there are my two sig figs. Right? There is a four after the four here. Right? Four is less than five, which means the last sig fig stays the same. So it would be three, four. The only catch is this. 34 is not very close to 34,400. So we need to make our number with the appropriate number of sig figs more reflective of the number our calculator tells us. And the only way we can make 34 not gain any sig figs but get closer to this number is by adding zeros. So if I add three zeros and do not put a decimal in, they do not count. This would be a number larger than one and there's no decimal so zeros at the end don't count. That means 34,000 would still have just two sig figs and it is a lot closer to 34,400 than 34 itself. Last one where we'll do two sig figs is if I have the number 0 0.04070. If this number is allowed to have two sig figs, right, I start counting sig figs. Right, does this zero count? No, it's a decimal number, right, which is smaller than one, and they don't count until we hit our first non-zero. Does this zero count? No, we don't count zeros till we hit the first non-zero. Does a four count? Yes. Right? And remember, as soon as you hit the first non-zero in a decimal, everything after counts, even if it's a zero, which means that zero will count. So there are my two sig figs, so then I have to decide, will the zero get rounded? Well, there's a seven after it. Seven is greater than five, so it will round up. So I will write this number as 0 0.041. If you wrote this number as just 0 0.041, that would be fine also. It still has two sig figs, right? the zero in front of the decimal. Some people like to use it, some people don't. To be honest with you, you'll see me use this version more often because I think it's less confusing than when I have a, what I call a decimal number when there's a number in front of it. So I really only put the number in front if it's one or three. Right, jumping down to these bottom four, each of these is allowed to have three sig figs. So we would go through and do the same sort of thing. Is a one significant? Yes. Is a two? Yes. Is an eight? Yes. Now we have to decide, will we round the eight? Well, the first number after it is a seven. Seven is greater than five, which means it will round up. We will call this number 12.9 to make it accurate. 12.83, say, shows up on my stopwatch, but I only get three sig figs because of what's going on. Is a one significant? Yes. Is a two? Yes. Is an eight? Yes. First number after is a three. Three is less than five, so it says to keep that the same. So we'll call this one 12.8. Next case, 12.85 with three sig figs. Does the one count? Yes. Two? Yes. Eight? Yes. Here is that scenario where we have a five and we have two separate rules. Rule number one, if that number is equal to five, first one past the last significant digit, we check to see if there's a number after it. There is not a number after the five, so we can't use rule three. That pushes us into rule four. If the number is equal to five and there is no number after, make the last significant digit even by rounding up. Well, as you can see here, 8 is already an even number, so we don't need to do anything to the 8 to make it even, so this would be 
Last case that we'll look at, right, number seven, I get three sig figs with the number 12.850. With that, does the one count? Yes. Two, yes. Eight, yes. Again, here is that pesky scenario where the first number after is a five. First thing we check is, is there a number after the five? The answer to that question is yes. Even if it is a zero, there still counts as having a number after. If there is a number after it, it says, if yes, round up. Which means the eight will become a nine. We will call this 12.9. So those are some different things that we will have to do with rounding as we go through. The second thing I wanted to show you is how do we tell the number of sig figs that we are supposed to have in a number. And that is the last thing that I want to do right, on the video. If we get ourselves a fresh port. This is on the same overhead that you have printed out that lists the rules for rounding. All right, it talks about multiplying and dividing and adding and subtracting, but I will relist them up here. To determine the number of sig figs. When multiplying or dividing, the rule is this. The final answer cannot have more sig figs than the least significant number in the problem. Right? What that means is this. Your final answer will always match the smallest number of sig figs that a number possesses. It will always be the same. It cannot exceed that. If we were to look at a problem, for instance, 17.4 centimeters times 3 centimeters. If I type that into my calculator, my calculator is going to tell me 52.2 square centimeters is the answer. Now, the question is, is uh, am I allowed to write that in that fashion and say that it's accurate? Here is how we figure it out. When we look at the problem, we say how many sig figs each of those numbers has, and then the answer has to match the least. So if I look at 17.4, does a 1 count? Yes. A 7? Yes. A 4? Yes. That number has three sig figs. We move on. The three, does the three count? Yes, there's nothing else. Right? So with the three counting, this only has one sig fig. My answer has to match the smallest number. So this one has three, this one has one. My answer can only have one sig fig. So I'm going to have to write the number 52.2 with just one sig fig. So we start looking. Does a 5 count? Yes. There is my 1. Now we'll have to look at our rules for round. First number after is a 2. 2 is less than 5, which says keep the 5 the same. So that means we would have a 5. However, 5 is not very close to 52, so to make it closer, we'll add an insignificant 0. That doesn't count against us. So it's going to be 50, and then never forget your units, centimeters squared. And the reason we have to do that is I measured this with perhaps a centimeter ruler, which lets me say 17.4, but with this, I only had something that could tell me the number of centimeters and nothing in between. 
Right? So I can't claim that it's 52.2 when one of my two measurements was with something that has no ability to tell me that specifically. That is why we always match the number with the least sig figs. Those are your rules anytime you multiply or divide. Let's take a look at what you do if you add or subtract. Your rule for determining sig figs when you add or subtract is that the final answer can only go as many places past the decimal as the least number in the problem. Very often you'll hear me say, do I care about the number of sig figs, which is multiplying and dividing, or places past the decimal, which is adding and subtracting? If you can remember that simple rule, sig figs will be no problem for you. Right? So when I add and subtract, I clear, care about places past the decimal. So if I looked at an example of that, for instance, 11.374 grams plus 112.11 grams. My calculator says 123.484 grams. Now, I need to decide, am I able to write that number in that fashion? Because this balance is called an analytical balance. It can tell me to the thousandth place. This balance is just called a centigrade balance it can tell me to the hundredth place. Right? So the idea here is, is can I definitively say that I have 123.484 grams based on what I'm seeing? So the first thing you do is you look at mathematically what you're doing. We are adding. And when we add and subtract, we care about places past the decimal. So if we break these numbers down, 11.374, we don't care how many sig figs it has, all we care about is that it goes three places past the decimal. 112.11, again, we don't care about the number of sig figs it possesses, we just care that it goes two past the decimal. So now my answer has to match the least number of places past as the number in the problem. This goes three past, this goes two past, my answer can only go to past the decimal. So there is two places past the decimal. I still have to round. Four is less than five, which means that number will stay the same. So 123.48 grams is all the more accurately I could say that that mass is going to be. Multiplying and dividing, you care about number of sig figs. Adding and subtracting, you care about places past the decimal. I hope this helped sort things out for you. If you are having trouble, if you are still confused, please come in for some help. Other than that, make sure you print out the handouts and you get those. And if you have any questions, feel free to stop in and ask.